If you've ever opened an Excel file and thought, where do I even start? Well, then this video is for you. Whether you're in HR, finance, sales, operations, or just trying to keep your life in order, the truth is that Excel is one of the most valuable and underutilized tools out there. And the good news is that you don't need to be a data analyst or a math wizard to start using like a pro. I'm about to walk you through some of the most powerful foundational Excel skills. The ones that will help you answer smart questions, make better decisions, and save yourself hours of tedious work. And here's the best part. Most people have no idea how easy this stuff can be. So imagine this. You're an HR coordinator at a mid-sized company, and you have a database of hundreds of employees and some pretty big questions to answer. Questions like how many employees are still active? Which departments have the highest turnover? Who are the employees with the highest salaries? And where are we recruiting most of our talent from? Now you could spend hours digging through those spreadsheets manually, or you could just use a handful of basic Excel tools to answer all of those questions quickly, clearly, and confidently. So let's fire up Excel and get to work. Here in Excel, you'll see that we've got a table for our employees with some information on each one. So we've got their salary, their recruitment source, and the date of hire and termination, if applicable. And we've also got a manager ID, which is linked to the employee IDs. So for Calvin, their manager is 10019. And if we go to 10019, you'll see that their manager is Vito. And we've also got a position ID for each employee, which maps to this positions table. So if we go down to 26, you'll see that Calvin is a production manager in the production department. So let's start diving into the data here, starting with getting a feel for how many employees we have in this database. Now we could scroll down using this wheel here. And in this case, it's not that bad. It's not a huge data set. But the best way to do this is with any cell here, we can start at the top. We can press control arrow down and that's going to navigate all the way to the bottom of the data set. In this case, you'll see that we have 312 rows, which means that we have 311 employees if we don't count the headers row. And we can use control arrow up to navigate back up. And if we start with the first employee and this time hold control shift and press arrow down, now we can select all of the employees and you'll see that we get a count of 311. So that's confirmed. Now let's take a look at some of these other fields. We'll want to keep an eye on this salary column. So it's probably best to format these numbers properly so that it's easier to read them. So what I'm gonna do use the arrows to navigate to salary. Again, control shift arrow down to select all these salary values. And I can press control backspace to navigate back to the active cell while still maintaining my selection. Now to change the formatting for this, I can go to home and then select any one of these preset number formats here. Now in this case, I don't want the decimal places, so I can go to more number formats to open up the format cells dialog box. Now if I close it, the other way to get there is to actually press this little arrow here. Or my favorite way is to use the control one shortcut. Now that we're here, we can apply a currency formatting, no decimal places, press OK and we're all set. And if we go down here to our summary stats, you'll see that the average salary is roughly $69,000. But right now we're looking at all of our database, but not all of the employees are active. Some of these have termination dates, which means that they're no longer at the company. So let's filter those out. To do that with any cell in our table selected, we can go to home, sort and filter, and then enable the filters here. You'll see that it's going to add these arrows. If we click on date of termination, what we can do is deselect all of these because we don't want any date of termination values. We only want to keep the rows that have a blank date of termination, which means that they are the active employees. So if I press OK, you'll see that now we're only looking at the active employees. And if we look down here, you'll see that we're only showing 207 out of the 311 records, which means that we have 207 active employees. And if we go back and select our salary column, control shift arrow down, control backspace, you'll see that now the average salary changed to about $70,000. So let's maybe take a look at the active employees 
with the highest salaries. You'll see that we have some pretty high values here. So to sort this salary column, we can again go to home, sort and filter, and sort using these buttons here. That's not the fastest way. The best way is to do it again through these arrow icons. But instead of clicking, I'm actually going to use the Alt arrow down shortcut. That's going to open up the same menu. I can use the arrows on my keyboard to navigate. And then here, just press space to apply my selection and sort from largest to smallest. And press space. And it looks like Janet King is the employee with the highest salary. She's earning about 250K a year. And the fact that she doesn't have a manager likely means that she's the highest ranking employee at the company, which actually makes a lot of sense. Now to remove the filters, again, we could go back, sort and filter, and then click on this filter icon again. But I actually prefer using the Control Shift L shortcut that you can see highlighted here. So if I go back, press Control Shift L, you'll see that it'll turn off the filter toggles and press Control Shift L again, and they will come right back. So those are spreadsheet fundamentals. Now let's start writing some formulas. Now, so far, we've used this date termination field to filter the active employees, but it would be helpful to have a dedicated value for active or inactive. So let's create a new column here. Let's call it status. You'll see that Excel is pretty smart and it auto applied the formatting here. And what we need the formula to do is to make this value active if the employee doesn't have a termination date and to make it inactive if it does. So you may have guessed it, we need to use the if function. So I'm gonna start with an equal sign to let Excel know that I'm gonna write a formula. Let's write our if function, press tab to apply that. And we want to start with the logical tests. So if the date of termination is equal to nothing, so if it's blank, and to do that, I can just use double quotes. So if the date of termination for this employee is blank, we'll then come over to my next argument. The value I want to return if this is true is that this employee is active. And anytime I want to return text as a part of a function, I need to wrap that text in quotation marks. So if date of termination is blank, it's active, comma over. If it isn't blank, so if it does have a date of termination, well, it means that employee is inactive. Close the quotation, close the if function, press enter. This employee is active. And if we apply this formula down, I can hover over to the bottom right corner of the cell here until I get this little crosshair. Double click. And you'll see that these are active, these are inactive, and it looks like this is flagging these properly. Now, it would also be helpful to know the actual position and department for each employee without having to navigate back and forth between these two tables. So to do that, we can use the XLOOKUP function. So let me add two new columns here. I'm gonna right click, insert, and I can right click and insert again, or I can press F4 to repeat my last action. And this is going to be the position. This is going to be the department. So again, let's start with an equal sign, XLOOKUP. And we want to look for this position ID. That's our lookup value. We want to look for it in this array of position IDs here. Let me select that with the mouse. And we want to return the matching position for that position ID. So if I close my XLOOKUP function, press enter, it looks like Janet is in fact our president and CEO. You can double click here to resize. And before I apply my formula over to the right to look up the department for each employee, and then apply it down to do the same for the rest of the employees, we need to be mindful of our reference types. Now, right now, these are all relative references, which means that if I apply this to the right and press F2 to take a look, you'll see that now we're no longer looking up the position ID because this reference moved to the right along with my formula. So let's press Escape and Control Z to undo. And let's think about how we want these references to behave. So I'm gonna rewrite my formula. Let's start with X lookup. We want to look up this value and we always want to be pointing at the position ID column. So we want a fixed column reference, but we don't always want to point at this row because we do want it to apply down for the rest of the employees. So we need a fixed column and a relative row. 
Now we can manually add a dollar symbol in front of our column to fix it, or we can use F4 to cycle through the different reference types until we land on the one we want, in this case, fixed column relative row. So that's our lookup value. Let's come over to our lookup array, head over here to positions, select our position ID, and we always want to look up the position IDs in this exact range. We don't want it to move down or over. So I'm going to press F4 to fully fix this reference. You'll see that we have dollar signs before the columns and the rows. Let's comma over to the return array. And first, we do want to return the position, which is this range right here. But we do want this to move over to the right so that we can then look up the department. I'm going to press F4. That's fully fixed. Press F4 once again, and we're only going to fix the rows here so that it always stays in this range. But with the relative column, it can move over to the department. Close our XLOOKUP function. Press Enter. We still get President and CEO. We can apply this to the right. And now it's still pointing at the position ID. We get Executive Office. And if we select both, we can apply them down and we get all the correct values. Again, let's resize. And now we have a little bit more detail on each employee. So let's do some quick analysis on this data set. Using these new fields we created, maybe we want to calculate the turnover rate by department. So out of the total employees that we've hired in each department, which percentage are now inactive? Sounds like a tough ask, right? Well, it's actually just a few clicks away with the power of pivot tables. So with any cell here selected, let's go to insert, pivot table, and it looks like it's just selecting this cell for some reason. What we can do, select the entire range. So starting at the top, control shift arrow right, control shift arrow down. We have the full table selected, press OK. And you'll see that we have all of the fields or columns in our data set to work with. So let me bring this closer to my pivot table here. And if we want to break this down by department, all we need to do is drag the department into the rows of the pivot table. You'll see that we now have the unique departments in a list. And if we want the number of employees by department, well, we can drop the employee ID here into the values. Now, we know that we have 311 employees, so these numbers don't make a lot of sense. And the problem is that Excel defaulted to summing the employee ID values since they are numerical. But we don't want to sum though, we want a count. So we can actually change how these values are summarized. I'm going to select any of these, right click, and we're going to summarize the values by. Right now it's a sum. We can do other things like average, max, min. In this case, we want a count. And now we have a total of 311 employees. And this is the breakdown by department. It looks like most of them are actually in the production department. Now let's break these numbers down by the status. So we know of these employees, how many are still active and how many are inactive. So what I'm going to do is drag the status column into the columns. And now we can see, okay, of the 10 employees for the admin offices, seven are active, three are inactive, and the same applies for the rest of these. So we're getting pretty close, but we want the turnover rate. And to do that, again, very simple, we just need to change how we're showing these values. And in this case, I'm going to right click, go to show values as, and we want to display them as percent of row total. So out of the total employees for each department, what percentage is active and inactive? So we can select that. And there we go. If we focus on this inactive column here, we have the turnover rates. Now, unsurprisingly, production has the highest turnover. But it's actually quite surprising to see that the admin offices have a quite high turnover rate at 30%, as does IT. And if we want to use some data visualization to really make these differences pop, we can layer on some conditional formatting. So I'm going to select the inactive column, go back to home, conditional formatting, and let's use some red data bars here to really show these differences. So that's the turnover rate. But now that we're on the subject of data visualization, Maybe we want to create a pie chart to visualize where we're recruiting most of our employees from. And to do that, we need to summarize this data first. 
So again, let's go ahead and insert a pivot table. Now you'll see that the full range was selected. Let's create it in a new worksheet. Press OK. And again, we want to break down the count of employees. So let's summarize this as a count. And we want to break that down by recruitment source. And we can sort these from top to bottom. So with any cell here in the count selected, you can right click and sort these from largest to smallest. So it looks like most of our employees have been hired either from Indeed or from LinkedIn. But if we want to visualize it again, now we just need to go to insert. You'll see that we have the pie charts here. Let's insert a 2D pie chart. And there we go. We can maybe add some data labels here. Select those, format them. And instead of showing the number, let's maybe show the percentage. Let's make these white so we can see them. And it looks like more than 50% of our employees have been recruited from either Indeed or LinkedIn. If you want to learn more from our instructors, well, you're in luck. Right now, you can get up to 50% off at Maven Analytics as part of our spring savings deal. Don't wait too long because this deal won't last. So there you have it. In just a few minutes, we used basic Excel tools to cover insights that would have taken hours with a manual approach. And we didn't have to do anything fancy. No macros, no add-ins, no advanced tricks, just good old fashioned Excel fundamentals. And these are the exact skills that I teach in my new Excel Foundations course, where we go step-by-step -step through everything from spreadsheet basics to formulas, pivot tables, and charts using real-world data just like this. So if you're ready to feel more confident with Excel and finally take control of your spreadsheets, go check it out at mavenanalytics.io. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, make sure to like and subscribe for more data content just like this. See you in the next one.